I've spoken with different uh, with different people who have already sold their businesses, and what they tell me is that it's not only enough to have a profitable business. Because, for example, one of my biggest stores, uh, we started off just as a drop shipping store, and they told me, "Hey, if you just keep it as the same model and you just have a cash cow, as you said, yeah. like it is valuable, but yeah. it could be even ten times more valuable yeah. if you do the right steps." So, what are the important steps? Um, for a business, what are the investors looking for when they want to buy, let's say, if you want to completely exit your business, what are the investors looking at before they buy your store or buy your business? For sure. So, um, okay, let's um, one like one more step back. It kind of like I'm, I'm trying to like to kind of like show people the bigger picture. So there's like different types of like investors, different types of um, of buyers of your business, right? There's like, let's say, if I have a business and it produces like, let's say, $100,000 a year in profit and you want to buy that business and you pay me like $200,000, dollars $400,000 $400, cash or we finance it, whatever, that's one type of transaction. Whereas um, other, type of, other type of acquisition, other type of transaction is a strategic acquisition so for example there was a, a brand called hash blankets i don't know if you're familiar hash blankets yeah, yeah. uh it's a canadian brand and it was acquired i mean brand is like three four five years and a few years old but it was acquired for like i believe it was like 50 million mm -hmm. 25 25 up front and then the rest kind of like uh earnouts um mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken you know it, it has to be verified but like it's approximately those kind of numbers you can google it um, but it was acquired by, let's say, they were selling these like weighted blankets, and there's like a, and it's there like for for sleep, and there's a company that has like bigger like I don't know is it ma mattresses kind of like chain in the whole mm -hmm. Canada or like um, more like sleep products, so that company pretty much consumes them, gets all of their customers, so now they can upsell to those customers like mattresses, mm -hmm. blankets, whatever that is, right? So now there's like extra value that's in it. That, that that company can benefit from this is strategic acquisition right mm -hmm. so yes. the value of like sometimes businesses might not be as profitable but they they can be a strategic acquisition for someone and they can still have a lot of value okay so for example if i have a business let's say in the dock industry and for example i'm selling let's say do, um, dog leashes but mm -hmm. there's a huge player that's selling let's say dog bets they might want to buy me because this way they'll just yeah they'll they'll upsell to their audience way easily and they'll grab a bigger market share most probably because of that yeah they can cross sell different products they can bundle them up they can leverage the customer base so there is a lot of kind of like ways that these two businesses can um kind of like be uh, helpful for each other and they can also get their money back faster because mm -hmm. of that um because they you know they can literally like increase their sales just by having this also on books their revenue becomes bigger right it's kind of like that conglomerate type of the, the, the building that conglomerate type of company and that obviously will um impact the devaluation and um one more thing i guess uh it's um Depending on the the revenue numbers that you're looking at, uh, I, I mean, we 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 we're taught to be to optimize for profit. There's nothing yep. wrong with that, you know. It's like there's it's very good, it's very cool, but there's also a point where, you know, you you might kind of like sacrifice some of that growth because of the profit, and then it's not good, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've done that so many times, you know, over the last like years. Where, yeah, I'll say, you know, we can scale it. I clearly see the potential there, but let's just milk it for profit. And and that's that's how it is, you know. So um, versus like seeing the bigger picture, we might not be as profitable this year or might not just might just break even. But then next year we're building like, let's say we're doubling the revenue and now we can potentially exit. Very simple. Ex yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask you like, what are, like if if I uh, you're speaking to way more investors than probably anyone uh, in like in my circle, but like what are the investors looking for? Are they looking for a very profitable business, or they're mainly looking for a sustainable, systemized business? What are what's like hotter for them? What do they want to see? 
they want to see like clear like gross gross trend so they want to see let's say business started 2019 2020 grows here 2021 grows 2022 shows gross projection as well they want to see that uh they want to see kind of like the repeat buyers they want to see the retention so if they have to every every time if they have to like acquire a new customer and that customer that already is there like the repeat rate repeat purchase ratios are like three percent that's like most drop shipping businesses three five seven mm-hmm. percent you know i've seen so many of them you know um yep. It's, well. <laughs> then it, that business is like obviously not very valuable. So they want they're buying they're buying the cash flow and they're buying the peace of mind. They're buying kind of like they they're buying the potential ROI. That's what they're buying pretty much. And um, if your business has the potential to implement any sort of like subscription or like recurring revenue, I mean that's even better. So if you kind of like. That's again, like so. Repeat purchase ratio, okay. So even if you're not advertising as heavily, but you can just like send emails and just like retarget people, is still generating sales. The same as if you have like subscription uh, or like recurring purchases, then um, also you might advertise less, but you're still generating sales. Business is still profitable. That's mm-hmm. what they're buying. They're buying that kind of like peace of mind, and they're buying pretty much ROI on their investment. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. It does. Uh, or at least to me, it makes perfect sense because at the end of the day, if you're like as an investor, they need to see the future. And if it was only a cash cow, they need a bigger cash cow. And if it's a brand, then they can see it like growing in the next, let's say, three, five, seven years and make their money even even more and more because they probably would like to sell it even like after that in five years would like even more profit. 100 percent. Yeah. Great. You have a great community of people that are e-commerce store owners, six, uh, six figures, seven figure e-commerce store owners. When you're discussing with them this uh, and you're having like Q&A's with them uh, on the topic, what do you see as main mistakes of people who have grown from zero to six and seven figures when when it comes to exit strategy or when it comes to actually being ready to even consider an exit strategy? Very good uh, question. So I think in general, it's um, I think in in general, it's um, I, I think mostly it comes down to the kind of like team and how they structure their teams, because one of the big factors um, is the financial uh, kind of like part, the bookkeeping. So bookkeeping needs to be like very clean if you want to sell your business. You want to have like uh, you want to close your books every month. Uh, you want to have like all of the um, uh, all of the transactions uh, basically associated with with the type of spend. So it has to be very clean, like um, P and L and balance sheet uh, for the bit for the business. And a, and a lot of the times, you know, that's just like someone like some accountant does, like who also serves like twenty type of different businesses or the business owner himself does the bookkeeping so it's kind of like the mass on that side i think the uh, kind of the financial side because even from the you know like how big investors are looking at the business obviously they're looking at like non-tangibles like brand equity and stuff but also they're looking at books you know like mm-hmm. warren buffett looks at like balance sheet and 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 sees whether the company is actually and he can kind of like figure out what the company is actually worth what is the trend year over year? Like, is company trending up or trending down? Like, what is the net profits? What's like R and D spend? Um, what's you know the market share? Um, what are the new categories? Like, what's the competition? So, all of those things, I think, uh, people kind of like put on the back burner. The focus on like marketing, ad spend, funnels, you know, kind of like on that like very sexy stuff, um, and disregarding the financial part, and then like. Because if they would actually look at their books and like, okay, so this is the actual profit and your profit might be actually lower or higher than you think. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of business owners, I mean, you have, let's say you have like a company credit cards and you go to the restaurant, right? And you have a personal credit card. Like which ones would you, which ones will you use? <laughs> you know, right? Like, so a lot of companies, like a lot of business, it's like, you know, that's tax, tax deductible. Yeah. You yep. say I, I, had, I had a lunch with a client Mm-hmm. Maybe not, you know, like five bottles of like champagne in a club. Um, probably you didn't, but you know, they, they still do it, you know. So 
um, car, like does do I buy car for my money or companies like money? Oh, it's a corporate car. Oh yeah, actually, yeah. I, I needed to carry my inventory. I needed to like transport like from one place to another. Yeah, do you really need that like Mercedes, like brand new Mercedes to transport you your ass? <laughs> of course, when the tax people ask you, that's exactly what you tell them. Exactly, right?